I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Hello, and welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James, and I am very grateful that you are here. I feel so privileged to introduce you to powerful women, women that understand that they have a passion, women that are willing to step into their greatness, women that are change makers and want to make a difference on this planet for themselves and for others. And so we do this every week. We're on Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, Spreaker, Amazon, and video on YouTube. Subscribe, come back, meet a new woman every week, tell other women in your life to come because every single woman that I interview has something powerful to say and will give you tools that you can use for your own life. You can also go to CynthiaJames.net. That's my uh, website. There's gifts there and resources for you. And you can get my monthly newsletter and join my community. So today, uh, I get to introduce you to a new friend. Uh, her name is Kimberly Peevler. She is an RN, a BSN, with 25 years of experience. She is a certified holistic life coach and mindfulness practitioner. Kim founded Milan Mind, a holistic lifestyle company supporting Black women. She teaches the art of presence as an antidote to combat stress and improve our overall well-being. Her program is currently in the early phase of an adaptation of the film documentary, Culture Meets Presence. We will be talking about that. She is also a member of the Holistic Nursing Association and the National Black Nurses Association, where she connects with like-minded professionals who share her commitment to holistic care inspiring Black women to embrace their inner values and lead their lives with intention is at the core of Kim's mission. She believes in the transformative effects of mindfulness meditation, using it as a tool for self-value, self-awareness, and self-acceptance. Kim, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I am Filled with gratitude to be here with you, sharing this space. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about our conversation today. Me too. But let's start with where you were born, how you grew up. Okay. Um, I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and since then, I've kind of lived in that Midwest kind of area there. But in Milwaukee, I lived there till I was about 10 years old. Um, and then we moved to St. Louis. So my mom was from St. Louis and she moved to Milwaukee. We had family there. And when we moved to St. Louis, we went to live with my grandmother um, who had cancer at that time. So my mom, being the only daughter, she went back to kind of help take care of her Um and that was a whole different world for me then at that point, because I think that in Milwaukee, Milwaukee was filled with issues for starters, but it felt like we lived in, uh, it just felt maybe, and I could be a kid, but it felt like Sesame Street in a way. Um, but when I got to St. Louis, so my grandparents were one of the few Black people at the time to purchase a home. So mm -hmm. years and years ago, they purchased a home and they owned a home. And that was, you know, a long time ago. And it was kind of rare at that point. But at, at some point in cities, that neighborhood turned into the affordable neighborhood. So when we got there, it was not a good neighborhood at all. So, um, yeah, it was filled with <laughs> another set of trauma, you know, uh -huh. for me moving from there to um to a neighborhood that was really it I felt like it wasn't safe to be outside right and do you think moving with your grandmother planted any seeds of caregiving in you um 
Uh, so I'm going to say no because um, of the, and, and I, I want to say it um, in a way that that can still I can still be respectful of her memory. But my grandmother was a bit affluent. She she could pass what you call uh-huh. passing. She could pass right, and she wore that with a badge of honor. Um, and she really wasn't interest. She she just wasn't a typical grandmother. I, I want to say. <laughs> okay, well, let me intersect here because okay, um, the black people listening to this will know what she's talking about. The <laughs> Caucasian people or other other um, um, nationalities. What she's saying is because of her skin color, she looked like she was white, and so that was a badge of honor. You know, you know decades back you know that was that was an aspiration mm-hmm. you know for safety to make make you feel like you you counted mm-hmm. so um but i want to know then where did where did this call for nursing come in this call for wellness mm-hmm. well Cynthia, again so i have like these little b- bizarre kind of stories so <laughs> this is what nursing I still believe that they it was a divine intervention so after high school I went to Gramlin State University which is a HBCU mm-hmm. um and at that school I met a girl uh from Chicago and for me I thought she was the coolest thing ever she she had this little two-seater Capri again um she just felt like a free spirit of sorts. So I thought she was super cool. So when someone asked her what she was studying, she said nursing. So like me being motivated, I mean, (laughs) it's not atypical for me, but me being motivated by coolness, it was like, well, then I want to be a nurse. And then really that's how it started. Right. So it wasn't necessarily um, the story of, I want to take care of people. (laughs) I want to. It started with the girl at the elevator, but I do. I mean, again, so it's it's actually probably been twenty six years. So it's twenty six years later, and I'm still doing that. And then early in life, I had childhood asthma, and I was really sick all the time. So it was probably something that was planted there. I was in the hospital often um, with some respiratory. illness or asthma, I want to say. So it, it could have been planted there, but it's like God needed to speak to me in a way um, that I could hear it. So I <laughs> totally, totally get it. So, so I want to know, when did it occur to you that you wanted to focus on Black women and our health? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and again, so I think it was my calling, right? For me, it was my health. So I mentioned that I had asthma as a child. Mm-hmm. And then at the age of about 23 or 24, I was very sick. And I ended up with, um, we call it a trach, but a tracheotomy is where they cut your um throat and kind of put a tube in there. So it was an emergency tracheotomy and I was in a coma for like three days. And that was the tipping point for me to feel like I didn't want that to control my life anymore. And I didn't identify with that anymore because prior to that, my asthma, my stories around asthma met you before you even met me. It's like introduce myself like, hi, I have asthma and my name is Kim. (laughs) And it was like, I didn't, I didn't want to identify with that anymore, I realized it had a huge control over me. So then at that point, and even even to this moment right now, as the process is beginning to unravel of how did I get there, you know, and and from there, um, I started to understand that it was stress. So I had early childhood emotional trauma. And that is really what kickstarted everything, right? So it's the chronic stress of living with that and never, and never having it be addressed. You know, there was never, um, like therapy offered and, and to be, to be super transparent about it, no one ever talked about it again, you know, right? ever. So sometimes you can have, you have these family 
issues or these family dynamics. And everyone in the family may know about it and people outside of it may know about it, but people don't talk about it as if it, you know, it never exists. So then you learn to develop some coping mechanisms and right. moms were not serving me. Right. And I was still like living with the stress of that to that point where it just kind of um, came to fruition when I had this overwhelming um, illness. And then from there, it's like, I've been really kind of getting at the root cause of what got me here. So that's where mindfulness came from for me. And then I also can see that that happens as well with other Black women in the in the Black community. Just the Black community in general, not even having a, you know, Dr. Dr. Joy DuVery talks about uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome, right? Uh-huh. And again, no one has really unpacked that. It's just, you went through this, you went through this, and then maybe it was, you know, civil rights and you just keep on moving. You know, that's what you you keep moving, you keep grinding and you don't process the past. You just leave it back there, but you don't really understand how much the, the past is really navigating your destination in life, right? It's navigating your journey. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, too. You know, there's this unspoken agreement in the black community. Don't let people in your business. It's it's yeah. that, you know, you, it, it's contained, except it's having impact, which shows up in behavior, which shows up in choices, which shows up in, in really interesting ways. And so um, um, plus, you know, black women you know, we're enculturated to be caregivers, take care of people, you know, do it, put them first, you know, mm-hmm. and because of slavery or whatever, our, our eating habits it didn't, didn't come along as so great. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think learning how to love yourself, take mm-hmm. care of yourself, honor yourself, it's a journey. Yes, it is. So, I want to talk about, um, you're doing a movie. What's the movie about? No, oh, so the movie is about culture Culture meets presence. So um, again, I went through nursing school and I think at even in nursing school, I was probably always interested in alternative forms of, of healthcare, right? Mm-hmm. Um But at some point I found mindfulness and it's probably been somewhere between 13 and 15 years ago. And the first community group that I taught um, was called Black Chicks Meditate. So again, (laughs) about 15 years ago. And the issue was that Black chicks were not meditating, right? Because the word mindfulness has a Buddhist lineage to it. Right. Right. And it wasn't as it, I mean, right now is probably even saturated. It wasn't that way 15 years ago. So people knew, or Black women knew that it had a Buddhist lineage lineage, and and then even just meditation in and of itself was like, what is this? I don't know what this is. It kind of caused friction with Christian beliefs, you know? So I felt like I spent a lot of time um, convincing, you know, Black women, uh, the benefits of it and how it can help with stress. But then I moved away from that town and I live where I live now. So um, I created a group then and it was called um, She Meditates. And it was a multicultural group. And, and I felt like it was very beneficial as well because I feel like we need to see ourselves in each other, right? Yes. We more alike than we have different. And I'm all about that. But then just through some serendipitous moments at my um, place of employment, I noticed that they had a meditation room. And from there, I'm like, what, what's going on in the medical world that you can put a meditation room in the hospital? So then I decided I wanted to go back. I went, I went back to school before to be a nurse practitioner for like a year and I didn't like it and I stopped. But this time it's like, if this is happening in medicine, this may be something I want to get on board with. Um, but again, the, the nursing curriculum, when I looked at the master's program, it didn't satisfy me at all. Um, so I found a mindfulness program and it's from an accredited university. 
And after being accepted into the school and, and, and all the research that I do is for is on black women, um, because I noticed the health disparities. So for being a nurse for a long time, right? And then seeing what the literature says that how our biggest our our biggest morbidity and mortality rates has to do with our health disparities. Right. So then back. I went back full circle and in my internship, I created an eight week program that's specifically designed for black women in a way to introduce mindfulness to you that doesn't um, that is culturally appropriate. Let's say those words that is culturally sensitive to our needs. And then the documentary is the adaptation of that eight week program. So what I've done is like I'm taking women through the program. We're documenting their um, their journey through it. And then it's also intertwining bits of my story as well. But it's doing it in a way that like what does our culture look like being present? And this is and this is where we meet at that moment you know, in this moment. That's well, it's beautiful. And, you know, uh, the thing is, it's like um, mindfulness now is being taught in universities, in corporations, it's, you know, and so I love that you're doing this and documenting it uh, because I think we need to see ourselves healing. Yes. And yes. so... Did you know how to do a documentary? Uh, no. So <laughs> again, this crazy little stories about me. So I, I'm in nursing. It's kind of so funny. It's like, why am I always trying to get away from nursing? And I feel like, again, so even in nursing school, I'm, I'm, I'm in a four-year program and I'm in a management class and I'm writing a paper about how I'm using nursing to help me be a, to, so I can act because I was an act for me, I was an actress as well. So when I lived in my other town, I kind of quit my job and decided that I was going to go be a star, right? So my husband's like, oh, okay. So now you're on to something else, right? So, um, and I and I came to, closer to Chicago. This is where I live now. And I'm doing a lot of acting things here in the community. Um, so I know in front of the camera, but I don't know too much behind the camera, but I have a, a magnificent crew that works with me. I hired a great director and production company, um, and a writer. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. We are really working to, um, bring a bit of richness to, to the story, you know, as you said, seeing each other heal and knowing that a person who could have gone through your exact same story can have a process of of dealing with what what is you know, and seeing yeah it. yeah. So I, I guess I want to just say though, what what is your vision? What do you hope this documentary will do? Mm. I I I hope the documentary will start a conversation. Right. And one of the biggest things that I've noticed with doing the work that I'm doing with mindfulness and then doing it in the black community is that black women feel like they they're not stressed if there isn't some big stressor in life. Right. So if there is a maybe a death, a loss of a job or, you know, or 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 any of those things. Right. Even um, moving a baby, something like that. It's like. If you ask the average black woman, is she stressed? She says no. Right. Yet our health disparities are high across all social economic statuses, right? So right. if if you think that a person who um maybe is on the lower income and they don't have access to health care, they don't have access to take care of themselves, then you would think the disparities would be higher there. But as you can see, even with some of the celebrities, um, it's just as high with people who are multimillionaires. When you look at maybe um, what Serena Williams went through a little bit with mm. the, the fetal, the maternal fetal death rate for mm. black moms is sky high. When you can see that happening, it's just let it's letting you know it's a way that we process. So I'm really hoping that black women will take a step back and begin to 
take an inward journey in, because as you mentioned before, um, we're constantly on the grind. We're taking care of our parents, taking care of our kids. We're in the neighborhood. You know, Sister Johnson from church may need something and and every other little thing in there. But we begin to put ourselves on the back burner. Right. And it's about not trying to fit into the mold of I take care of everything. Right. And not include yourself in that. And some of it has to do with having a relationship with yourself as well. Hundred percent. Well, and you know that thing you were talking about. We're so used to juggling a lot of balls that we don't think it's creating stress. We don't think that it's having impact. So, I'm grateful that you're doing this because I I think, um, first of all, we need to know how to identify stress really, mm-hmm. and then how do, what do you do to to manage it. And, and learn to care for yourself first. So uh, I, I love that you're doing this. And so, and you're in school too now. When do you graduate? Uh, December. I'm working on the thesis right now. So I'm in a thesis prep class and the next semester is the thesis. So I'm done, um, yeah, in December, so. <laughs> and when do you see your documentary coming out? Well, I would like for it to be out by the end of the year, but um, sometimes things don't go as planned. <laughs> but <laughs> definitely by the beginning, the beginning of the year, I would like mm-hmm. to to have that out there, and then we'll do um, we'll do a tour with it. We'll I mentioned before some HBCUs, and mm-hmm. maybe going to some of the um, the churches and showing it in different places like that, and I'm. Um, looking for a partnership with some of the healthcare systems, you know, as well to, to uh, kind of get the word out there. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, that's my hope is that you can just begin to look at yourself and realize what do you need for you? Yes. Yeah. And not, it's not, it's not outside of you. It's not in your credentials right? It's not in the commas in your bank account. It's not in how many organizations you belong to. It's like you are worthy because you're worthy and not yeah. and not the work that you do, you know? Absolutely. So how do people find you and find out about your movie? Oh, the platform. So the movie is called Culture Meets Presence. And that is, um, the website is culture, culture Meets with an S, Presence dot com. Um, right. And it's the same thing on Instagram. And then our company, the Melon Mind Company, where we teach the art of presence as an antidote to stress is Melon, M-E-L-A-N, M-I-N-D, melonmind.us. Um, and that's the website for that. Beautiful. Okay, ladies, let's support her. Let's celebrate her. Let's let's help her get her message out. Um, I asked the same last question of every guest. The show is called Women Awakening. What do you think is the most important thing about women awakening in this moment on the planet? Oh my goodness! I not only do I think it's um, it, a one most important thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. It's kind of uh, restoring a balance, right? I think that in so many ways we have been in a very masculine dominated kind of culture and um it's not to get rid of that masculine energy right but it is to start to invite the that feminine energy back in to awaken to something that was kind of denied to us at some point right maybe it was uh fear or whatever it is that you learned through the history of that but again it's like bringing the two back into harmony but we as women have got to we have to awaken to that within ourselves right and then we begin to do that collectively so shows like this um, and maybe the work that I'm doing is it's part of that. It's like, how can I wake up to who I am and what I'm here to do and my purpose and begin to get with with the program of living that? Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here, for bringing your wisdom. And uh, and I I'm so grateful that you're you continue to listen to your guidance. Yes, yes. 
I I am too. And I thank you for recognizing that. And I thank you again for letting me use your platform to talk about something that's so important for me. Um, and I think it's important for not only Black women, but once once we one person heal, we all can begin to heal with that. That's right. So I thank you for having a platform where you're talking about important issues that pertain to us all. So yeah, it's reciprocated. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. All right, ladies, I'm going to say the same thing I always say to you in a different form. This is the moment. Nothing to wait for. Nothing from the past stopping you. This is your moment to remember who you are, to put yourself first, to care for yourself, to love yourself, to honor yourself, and to demand the same from everyone around you. Something beautiful is occurring because your presence on this planet is essential. Know that you're held, know that you're loved, know that you're important, know that you matter. And I'm very grateful that I get to be with you every week. 